morning everybody so uh, i haven't done a camper video in a while so we're gonna do uh, an update on gracie the camper here and uh do a few things on it and uh, see where we're at so let's see what we got okay so it has been a while since i did an update on this thing but we've been doing little bits here and there i've been focusing mainly on the truck though so uh i was gone all week for work and just got back the other day did a few things on this so we're going to do a video kind of update and we're going to work on a few things on this thing i mean we are uh we're we're getting close i hope to actually using this thing so um so anyway <clears throat> if you look at the front we got the bumper back on we got all this back together it is running really good i ended up putting the old quarter jet from the 350 back on there and it runs fine and i'm sending back the rebuilt one that uh, had the issues so i'm just gonna go with this one for now uh if i have problems with this one we may end up sticking a holly on it or something i don't know we'll see but it's it's running really good and um so right now i don't have the grill on it because um, i need to finish hooking up the uh the dash air conditioning so the one fitting is right here i gotta get a hose set for this thing <clears throat> and the problem i'm having is almost all these uh, g-class vans that i've seen the uh, ac compressor is on that side and the alternator is on this side so the guy told me this motor came out of a c-class which must have been different but so the problem is i mean your compressor is right here and your dryer is right here so i just need a little short suction line to go to there and then uh a longer line to go to the condenser so i looked at a lot of the pre-made ones and there's doesn't seem to be anything out there so i do have a ac line compression kit that i had bought so i think we're just uh there's a fitting you can put on the back of this r4 compressor and uh, make your lines just order the fittings so i think that's what we're gonna do um <clears throat> but uh very happy with the way it's running a couple of mechanical things we need to do I, I got an exhaust hanger banging around back there but uh we're good so on the inside we got like all of this stuff let's trim back up here where it was we got the seats back in we got everything cleaned up we got the motor cover back on um, there was like staples everywhere and little bits of carpet with screws because this had nasty old gold shag carpet in. I went through, got all the screws out, went through, pulled all the staples out, wiped it down. Seats are back. Um, changed out the gauges because the uh, oil pressure gauge, as soon as you started this thing, and I tried it with a couple different sending units, that gauge would just swing around and peg. And, uh, I guess there was something wrong with the gauge. So I had some, uh, had a few of these dash assemblies in the back, swapped the gauge out, and it works good now. So very happy with that. <clears throat> Got this trim back on here. I'm just still not sure what we're going to do with this. We're, we're starting to think we might not put a bed up there. We might use this for storage. So uh, whatever uh, laminate we put on the floor or... Uh, Whatever we put on the floor, I think we might put up here. So we're still kind of deciding that. But uh, in the back, Alicia started taking cabinet doors off. And uh, she's going to be working on painting those and painting the cabinets and painting the walls. Um, I plugged this in for the first time yesterday. And all of the lights work in here the rooftop air conditioner works good um all the outlets seem to work this fridge came uh it says it's coming on it says uh auto and ac uh but it doesn't seem to be getting cold and i don't hear a compressor running i'm not sure if this i think this has a compressor it's one of those um <clears throat> where you've got uh runs on propane when you're when you're not hooked up to shore power and when you're on shore power it's ac so i would like to try to fix that so anyway on this video i think what we're going to do is uh we're going to take it for a test drive i'm going to throw some plates on it 
but I don't have insurance on it yet, so we're just going to do a quick down the road and back and make sure the tranny shifts and all that, but I, I think we're probably good. Brakes feel really good on it, but let's just do a check on it. So I want to do that. Um, I want to hook it back up to shore power. It says there is propane in the tank when you hit the button up there. So it's got a quarter tank of propane, so uh, I want to see if we can get the generator running i don't know if that generator powers off of propane or if it taps off the fuel tank we got to figure that out so i like to try the pro try that um I like to try the furnace which is i think it's down there let's try that and see if it runs maybe we'll take a look at this uh maybe we'll see if the stove fires up just kind of try all of the uh different um appliances in here and see how they do and alicia's starting to do her thing so she's probably going to be pulling pulling more doors off she's figuring out her paint colors and her curtains and all that <clears throat> and uh then i need to address this really nasty bathroom so you got that little short toilet sitting on top of carpet and i'm sure there's all kinds of funk in that carpet so that's going to be coming out we're going to get a new toilet so hey what's going on me okay so uh yeah feeling pretty good about it man we'll try that little fan up there okay so let me uh i'm gonna throw pull the plates off my other van throw it on this thing so the the cops don't uh don't bother us we we'll go down the road and let's just take this thing down to I got a local park down the street. Let's just drive it down to the park and back and uh, and see how she runs, see if she has any problems. So, okay, back in just a few. Okay, we're gonna try our maiden voyage here. You ready, sweetie? I'm ready when you are. Hopefully we ain't walking. Well, we're either gonna make it down the street and back or we're not. Seems to be running good. Yeah. We've made it a whole 25 feet so far. <laughs> Gotta warm it up. I 
and this thing has moved on its own down the street since we've had it. I'll get that door. What? I'll get the door. Okay. And a windshield is dirty. Well, it's not been washed yet. I turned those off. Sounds like it's running good. Temperature's good, oil pressure's good, voltage is good. Says we got gas. Put that fist bump that one. Yeah. Okay, Mission feels good. Oh, don't go across them truck holes. Go flying. Maybe this time I'll try not to back into the house. Yeah, let's try not to back into the house. I'm impressed. I'm too. Little, little cheap old throw together motor. Hey, don't be talking about Gracie like that. This is Gracie. Does that make me George? figure out why this thing doesn't want to run uh it says gas serious on. it's got a screw gun and gloves look out <laughs> these, these are pretty toasty looking yeah they are that's why i to get different ones of those definitely clean up the hinges and paint them yep the idea. Did you get the generator going? Uh, it's got a little fuel pump on it. I, really, I don't hear it running. I gotta see if I can get the fuel pump to run and then try it. What did you do? I All think right, you good. threw the tip in there with the screw. You see it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> well, that's not good. Alright, I'm gonna keep trying on this thing. All right, so let's pull this cover off of here. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we can jump out that fuel pump. I really didn't want to cut the wire on it. Oh, 
There's no joke in there. That's a battery solenoid. And then let's see. Which is good. Okay. It's actually a circuit breaker. I don't know what the voltage on this fuel pump is. Almost looks like it might be a 120. Two fuses going here. And I think this is just a spare fuse holder. Or the fuse that's in there. There we go. That's what that's for. And it looks like that fuse is good. Let's see if I 
can find that out. Then we'll go from there. Okay, so I looked in the buck and this is a 12 volt fuel pump and it's supposed to get 12 volts while cranking. So let's see what we got. So it is getting, it is getting voltage while it's cranking. But this thing is so loud, I can't tell whether the thing is actually running or not. So let's go ahead and see if we can just jump this thing out and see if we can get a shift 12 volts right there. Let me see. Should be able to jump this pump out and see if it's actually pumping. We got voltage there. So. Nothing. Okay, well, that little fuel pump's dead. Wait a minute. No, that was the wrong side. I mean, this side. What am I doing? What the heck am I doing? Now, I should see if it runs. It does. Oh, gas. Nothing. Yep, I can definitely smell fuel, so it's getting fuel. Uh, okay, it's so getting spark. This is the next question. Let me go back. I've got one of those spark plug testers. Let me go back and see if I can find it and we'll test it and see if we're getting spark. All right, let's see what we got now. No spark. Okay, well, that's the problem. So, do we have some kind of on and off switch for the coil or? I said, I have never worked on one of these things. This work. It goes back to the coil, which is back. Oh my gosh. This feels absolutely hideous to work on. Seems to me there has to be an on and off switch somewhere for ignition for this thing and I haven't seen anything so let me go back to the book and uh, see if we can find something. It could just be a bad coil but uh, oh yeah I can definitely smell fuel now. We're getting fuel. Alright let's go take a look and see what we got. Alright so I'm inside. <clears throat> And we've got this control panel and i noticed one this pilot switch is not lighting up now it is working it'll crank but i thought that pilot switch should light up and then i also noticed this battery gauge um is not showing anything and when i'm hitting in the start position it also doesn't show anything so i was looking on the back of the switch and i got power here um if you look at this battery gauge, here's the plus side, here's the minus side. Well, they got the minus side running, no, they got the minus side running to the center wire. So it's minus for the battery gauge and 
minus for the hour gauge. So then this brown wire goes to the plus of the hour gauge. I think that should be hot when you're running so that you're running the hour gauge. But the plus side of the, the battery gauge goes to this terminal on the switch. And remember here, I wish I had a chassis wiring diagram on this, but I've gone through all this literature I've got on this, which is a lot of good stuff, got everything except the chassis wiring diagram. So we're just gonna have to figure it out. But uh, if I jump this 12 volt wire to this, then my battery gauge works. So I'm thinking, I'm wondering, am I getting 12 volts to, to the coil out there? Because I know I'm not getting spark. The coil is on the back side of that generator and really hard to get to. So we're gonna try. Let's put a jumper wire on that coil and see if this thing fires. Don't know if this is going to work or not. <sighs> and honestly, I can't even see. Which is the plus side of the coil back there. <coughs> but if we get it on the, on the wrong side, it shouldn't hurt anything. It should just not start. Man, it is hard to see back there. Somewhere I got a flashlight. I think the left hand side. If I put that there, there I go. Oh, that's it. See, look at my plug wire jumps when I do that. Let's we'll see what happens now. smell fuel I know I got fuel I know I got spark why won't you run okay I didn't like that thing <laughs>
I can get spark. I know I can, I know I've got fuel. I'm gonna button this thing up for now and I'm gonna have to do some more. Um no, I'm not. I'm gonna get some starting fluid. I'm gonna try to shoot it down there if I've got any. Let's see if that makes any difference. Back of you. Okay, last attempt on this today, and uh, I picked the air cleaner off. I noticed there's a little fuel filter here. That thing could be clogged up. Maybe I'm smelling fuel, but it's not getting down in the carburetor. So let's try this one more time. We still got to figure out why I'm not getting spark back to the coil unless I jump it. But I'm sure somebody out there on YouTube who's got one of these can tell me that so i uh, would appreciate any help you could give me okay let's see what we got come on baby that's that's what it is feel I'm betting either this is clogged up or even though that thing is running it's not pumping so we'll call that a success even though we've got more to figure out I've got a working generator very happy about that all right that's enough for today tonight's Super Bowl I'm gonna make uh, Alicia and I some food and we're just gonna watch uh, Kansas City uh, whooped a dog crap out of uh, the 49ers, so that's what we're hoping anyway. So let's get a word from the Lord, and uh, we'll call it quits on this for a day, and uh, thanks everybody for coming along. Hey everybody, thanks for coming along on today's video, and it was fun to get out there and uh, do some camper stuff, so um, <clears throat> I'm just going to order a fuel filter and uh, for, that, uh, uh, for that generator, and uh, maybe one of those little control panels because uh, uh something seems to be wrong with that but uh, at least we know it runs so and the road trip down the road and back was was pretty fun felt good to actually drive that thing so next i think we'll try to uh, i'll try to figure out what's going on with that refrigerator um and i need to um see about the furnace and the stove and the uh um water heater so i gotta get some propane on that thing so but anyway, I um, was listening to a uh, radio preacher this morning, uh, couldn't catch the guy's name, but was talking about uh, <clears throat> do miracles really happen? And he was, was telling a story that I thought was great, just wanted to share. He said he was um, um, getting ready for a uh, Sunday service and that a guy and his wife walked in. He said, obviously, this guy was a huge bodybuilder, great big guy. And uh, he said when he walked in, he said he had this um, uh, this kind of vision flash through his head of um, of the book of, of uh, the story of Samson um, about <clears throat> you know that uh, uh, you know God granted Samson uh, his strength, and uh, so he went up and talked to the couple, and you know, and uh, thanked for coming to church and. And, uh, you know, introduced himself, talked to him a little bit. And, uh, uh, you know, they hadn't been to that church before. And, and he told the guy, he said, uh, he said, I joke with him first. And he said, I, I said, uh, he said, um, by the way, he says, you wouldn't happen to do any bodybuilding, would you? And, and uh, he thought that was pretty funny. And the preacher said, well, he said, uh, you know, if you do, do the kind of exercise I do, you can have a, a body like mine. So, <laughs> which I thought was, was kind of humorous. Uh, but he said, he, he told the guy, he says, you know, when you walked in the door, he says, I don't know why, but the story of Samson flashed through my head. <clears throat> and he said, the guy told him, he says, um, 
He said he had been away from church for a long time. He said he had been a Christian when he was younger. He had been saved when he was a little boy. And he said he had uh, been sitting on his grandma's lap one time and his grandma was reading him the story of Samson and told him that... Um, uh, told him that if he followed the Lord, the the God that God would grant him grant him strength, and he said that he uh, he had been picked on in school and started getting into bodybuilding. He was a little skinny guy, and then he turned into this great big dude. But he said, um, the preacher said he says he says well I don't I don't know why the Lord wants me to tell you this. He says but he wants me Lord wants me to tell you that he kept up his end of the bargain. <clears throat> but you haven't. And the guy said, no, I haven't. I've been away from church for a long time. And he said, I'm ready to come back. So a uh, great story, I thought. And I, I just thought in my own life of uh, how many miracles I've seen, you know, my, uh, um, uh, when, I, when I was little, we had a, an oil burning furnace at our house. I don't know uh, how many people have those. You get the big oil tank in the back. It's like number two diesel or whatever. And it, uh, <clears throat> your furnace burns oil so that and the big oil truck would come out and fill the tank up and i remember one year my dad uh was, had been out of work for a while and i think we had a back bill with the oil company and they wouldn't bring any oil and we were close to running out and it was winter and um i remember dad he had this big stick with uh measurements marked on it and he went out to the oil tank and measured it, and he come in. I I heard him telling my mom. He says he says we are almost out of oil. We might make it another day or two. He says I don't know what we're gonna do. He says we don't have any money. So my mom got us together, and we uh, we prayed uh, that the Lord would get us through. And it took two weeks for my dad to get some work. Um, and then when he did get some work, he had to get paid the next week. Well, I'll tell you what, that furnace kept running that entire time. <clears throat> when it should have been out of oil. So that may sound like a small miracle to you, but it was a big one to us. And then just, uh, you know, my own story that I've shared of my uh, um, struggles I went through with uh, with alcohol and drug addiction and uh, the miraculous healing that I received, um, that the, the desire to use those things was just removed from me. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I was at the point of suicide and it... Uh, the Lord just took that away and, and made me teachable to, to learn and, and to recover from that. And, uh, and then, uh, another, another good one is my sister, Julie. She was, uh, back in the 1990s diagnosed with lymphoma, um, very aggressive form of cancer. Um, she lost all her hair. They had, uh, done chemo treatments <clears throat> and they told her it was to the point there was really nothing more they could do. But uh, the chemo treatment started working, and she lived another 20-something years and just uh, passed away this last year. So uh, that was her big miracle she would attest to. So I just uh, want to encourage you to look in your own lives for uh, what miracles might uh, have happened to you. How has God blessed you in your life or other people in your life that you can look at and say, you know, things seem bleak, but, uh, but the Lord was there. So I know there's a lot of those stories out there. And if you think it was coincidence, probably wasn't. I think I think the Lord was taking care of you. So anyway, let's have a quick word of prayer. <clears throat> Father, I just uh, I thank you for today. I thank you for uh, everybody out there watching this channel, and um, and I just pray for uh, um, those out there who may have some doubts going through their head. Maybe people who have been away from church for a while, or people who have uh, never gone to a church that. Uh, um, you would just uh, you would just uh, encourage those people. You would come to them. You would soften their hearts. You would show your presence to them, and that um, uh, you would lead them to you and, uh, and on, on the path to you. And uh, if there's anything uh, that we can do, those of us who are watching this channel that that are believers, we just ask you to send those non-believers our way and uh, give us the strength to. Uh, to say what uh, what you would have us say, to witness how would you would have us to witness, to uh, point those people to you. Just uh, use us um, for your purpose and for your glory. And we ask this in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen. All right, hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, next time, I don't know if we're going to do more on the camper or we're going to jump back on the truck. We'll, we'll see what the weather does. So 
I've uh, got plenty to do on both. So uh, thanks for coming along, and we'll catch you on the next one.